Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. On Thursday, the 8th of October, the Mumbai police registered a criminal case against a group of persons for allegedly manipulating and acting in a fraudulent manner to change television rating points and three television channels have been named this is it this include uh, republic television headed by arnab goswami box cinema fat marathi so to discuss the implications of what has happened in mumbai and larger issues relating to whether television rating points or television audience measurements can be manipulated can be rigged can be tampered with the corruption in the system i'm very happy to welcome a veteran from the media industry i'm happy to welcome chintamani rao he's seen television audience measurement in all its aspect over the decades he was one of the founders of the barc that's the broadcast audience research council one of its early chairpersons he's represented the barc before the information and broadcasting ministry and the telecom regulatory authority of india served on the transparency panel of tam as it was called television audience measurement as been in the profession in the media business for 40 years so worked with ad advertising agency media companies and television broadcasters thank you so much chintamani for giving us your time what do you make of this whole episode we have the mumbai police commissioner parambir singh saying we've arrested two former employees of hansa research group an agency engaged by the barc and we found that they were bribing households to manipulate television ratings that they were paying people who were who, who were not not english speaking to watch republic television in english that some of them were being paid between 500 rupees and 600 rupees and and this is a scandal that involves uh, the indian penal code and the criminal Pro procedure code and you have fraud manipulation etc etc uh mr goswami and republic television has said that the uh, bombay mumbai police chief has uh, is acting against them for it's it's a vendetta of sorts uh, because of the television channel's coverage of the sushant singh rajput case as well as other cases and that these allegations are false and motivated what do you make out of this entire episode chinta okay. i'm not going to go into uh with channels and what ornob said and i don't know who is culpable and who is not and who is who is guilty and who is not okay but first of all i'm amused that they are so shocked but my god do you know that people are actually manipulating the ratings they, oh my god they've discovered this next thing they'll discover that there are people actually cheat people they they, they will discover there are murders they will discover all kinds of things they said had the police just started discovering is the media everybody in the media is so utterly shocked by the idea that people are manipulating ratings i'm amused by that i'm highly amused but what are you doing all this time with the fast asleep that's number one number two is why does this concern the police this is the reason why i ask the police the mumbai police chief again i am not on anybody's side okay let's be very clear about that the mumbai police chief is shocked that people are being paid and this is under the indian penal code excuse me when i was in the tam transparency panel we took huge amount of trouble holding up channels who were actually what you call panel tampering okay when you when you when you mess about with the panel when you mess about the panel homes we caught channels that were engaging in panel tampering uh we hauled up several of them uh we stopped their ratings in some cases and let me tell you the channels that we hauled up included included channels of some major broadcasting networks okay they were not some mickey mouse little stand alone channel somewhere in, in you know in would you like channel. to name some of them 
No, 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 not at all, not at all. The proceedings of the time transparency panel, even if time is not in the business anymore, the proceedings are confidential. Will remain confidential as far as I'm concerned. Uh, at that time, one of the things that we were constrained by, let me tell you, Paranjal, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm also I'm amused and bemused. One of the constraints that we had was we were on our own because there was apparently no law governing corporate corruption. In, in fact, according to the consultation paper, the 2018 consultation paper of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, it pointed out that there was no special law to check tampering of ratings. Precisely. No. But do you know if there is no special law, then you use the existing laws that include the Indian Penal Code and the Criminal Procedure Code. But when we when we when we tried to when we tried to get the legal law authorities into the act, they didn't they weren't interested because there was no law governing corporate corruption. It has become such a huge national media cause uh, that someone is tampering with the ratings. Why does it matter? It matters to broadcasters, it matters to advertisers whose money it is. Why are the police so head up about it? One minute. It also matters to the viewers. It also matters because you are also manipulating what people get to watch. Hello, 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 hello. Please explain to me why by getting that a fact that a channel do you think, do you think do people watch a channel because it has high ratings or does it have high ratings because people watch it? Which is the cause, which is the effect, please tell me. You tell me. What people seem to think is that high ratings, that means people will watch it. No, no, no. Excuse me. Ratings are a measure of viewership. When people watch a channel, that channel gets high viewership, high ratings. Let me show you. Not like, rating is not like three star, four star, five star movie ratings. It's not like that. Let, the channel has high ratings in most this movie has got a four-star rating from the reviewer, so more people will watch it. No, 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 it's not like that. Chintamani, let me stop you and, and make a suggestion. Now, these numbers, you can correct me if my numbers are wrong. There are an estimated, some would say, 200 million, 20 crore households in India with television sets. I understand that many of them, or almost all of them, have either linked to a local cable operator or they have a direct-to-home service or some of them have what is called hits head end in the sky but to actually ascertain the viewing habits of 200 million 20 crore households you are using a very small number of what you now call barometers what were earlier called people meters and some years ago it was a smaller number now I don't know what is the exact number some people say they are 30,000 some people say they are 40,000 some people say they are 44,000 either way this is a minuscule proportion of the total number of households who watch television and, and they are skewed heavily in favor or in particular geographical areas particular social and economic categories and that is why it is easily prone to manipulation. You just rig a very small number of households and you skew the ratings. That's the complaint, your views. This whole business of the sample size has been an issue for, for forever. Okay. Uh, now, TRI has mandated certain increases in sample size. There must be 50,000 by so and so 100,000. They've, they've laid out. Uh, in fact, in I think March of this year, they said they're looking at an increase by December this year. Uh, how during the lockdown they expect an increase? Only TRI has been explained. But anyway, that apart. Please understand that every research agency in the world would love to have a huge sample. Who's going to pay for it? When TRI says increase the sample to 50,000, 100,000, A, on what basis? Does it have a scientific basis to say so? No, they have no basis. They're just numbers the area is putting out in their hat. But let us accept those numbers for a moment. Okay? 20,000 is a number. 50,000 is a number. Who will pay for it? Will TRA also mandate that the broadcaster should pay for it? Or is that somebody else's problem? We make the rules. It's somebody else's problem to how they have to be implemented. Is that, is that how it works? So 
please understand that neither tam at that time nor bark now is resistant to having a larger sample they have no issue with the huge sample one minute but somebody has to pay one minute the broadcast audience research council bark its members include the indian society of advertisers the indian broadcasters federation and the triple a of i advertising agencies association of india right okay. they have a monopoly earlier it was tam television audience measurement that was a private firm with uh, ac nilson cantar and others now you have these are so it's not just a small sum it's how the sample is structured how many are there in the rural areas where people watch television uh, using batteries of cars um, and and how well is that sample well, i should say stratified especially in a country which is as diverse as ours so many languages i mean i mean our society is arguably one of the least homogeneous societies in the world as a country so the point i go back to the point given the size of the sample let's assume that there are not enough people to pay for it but it is very very easily prone to rigging and manipulation because you need to tamper with just a few households yeah therefore so okay so what's the solution one is you right guys and, and, and the other is come down on rigging and manipulation increase the sample again tell me who will pay for it if broadcasters are willing to pay for it and if 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 subscribers that is broadcasters and media agencies are willing to pay for it and that's mainly broadcasters by the way typically 80 to 80 85% of uh, the revenue of a ratings agency comes from broadcasters okay the broadcasters are willing to pay for it there is absolutely no earthly reason why bark or any other ratings provider would say no no i am not going to increase the sample size you please leave it as it is why would they? why would they is there any logical reason that we can think of why a market research which is what bark is a market research agency okay why a market research agency would balk at increasing the sample if the client is willing to pay for it i can i have been around in this business for a while i can't think of any reason number 2 come down on panel tampering is easy to say of course of course you come down on it of course you must come down on it but who is tampering with it broadcasters right now hold on you you hit the nail on the head you are here bribing people okay bribery is an offense or not it is if you are if you are telling a person i'm going to give you x amount of money i'm giving you a television set and you are supposed to do this and you are supposed to do that you could argue that this is a criminal offense okay second point is that at the end of the day you are not denying the fact that given the size of the sample it's easily prone to rigging and manipulation because you have to really tamper with just a few households and these allegations yes, are not today but for several years now why oh or do i have been there as being on the tam transparency panel i have dealt with that issue i have dealt with panel tampering i've seen how little it takes i've seen how little it takes i know that but certainly at that time we were entirely on our own tam were entirely on their own in fixing this chintamani should we have competition among rating agencies or should there be always a monopoly earlier it was tam now it's bark for enjoy for enjoy okay please be patient with me while i explain this all right this has this keeps coming up but let me tell you back in the day we had two rating agencies there was tam and there was intam okay until in tam acquired intam and they became it became one so there were two agencies there was tam and there was intam intam was indian national time obviously uh it was so ridiculous some agencies used tam some used intam some clients wanted tam some clients wanted in tam because we we use the word currency but you know what if the word currency uh, leads to a skewed uh, uh, sort of wrong thinking because currencies are exchangeable you can change dollars into rubles or rubles into rupees there's a rate of exchange right there's no rate of exchange between tam and in tam 
you can't. They are too systematic research. So you are arguing that yeah. this is a natural One monopoly. Second. One second. So some some use TAM, some use in TAM. I present to TAM, but no, no, we use in TAM, and in TAM, no, we use TAM. There's nothing wrong with that, except that nowhere in the world, nowhere in the world, do two rating systems exist for a very good reason. Subsequently, we had uh, a map came up, so a map and those TAM. Okay, some subscribe to TAM, some some subscribe to a map. You use whichever one suited your purpose. One eminent news channel, which I shan't name at this moment, when they found they were going down, and uh, I've written about it. When they were going down in TAM numbers, they switched to, to they switched to AMAP. When they found they were going down in AMAP numbers, they, they switched to something else altogether of their own invention. How does it how does it work? If 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 we are so concerned, let me stop you here. Yeah. You're saying that this is like a natural monopoly. Am I correct? You can call it a monopoly, but yet yeah, there is there is for a market to operate sensibly. Can operate sensibly only if there's a single rating system. All right. Now let's move ahead. If you have the impaneled homes, their names being disclosed, they're not supposed to be disclosed, huh? The sure. number of people in that home, they are supposed to have separate uh, gadgets, and each time each different member, the father has one gadget, the son has another gadget, the the grandfather has another one, whatever it is. Do you or do you not agree that the way the whole system works, it is highly prone to corrupt practices, whether it be Republic Television being uh, allegedly uh, getting high ratings thanks to some Chennai household, Rajat Sharma's India TV, you work with Rajat Sharma, uh, complaining that TV9, Bharat, Bharat Varsh is, is, is complaining about it, whether it's Pranoy Roy and NDTV saying that the former uh, agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation said how that whole AC Nielsen Kantar system had been compromised. They went all the way up to the US and finally they didn't win the case on issues of jurisdiction. Or let's go back to the government, the government of India, Information and Broadcasting Ministry saying you are under reporting the audience of Doordarshan. Now, are you trying to tell me that this system is not in one huge mess as a result of which that viewer of television channel is more often than not bombarded with a lot of trash. Please explain to me the connection between the rating system and uh, we keep, you know, the, the viewer being bombarded with trash. The link is like this: that you are, you have an incentive to cater to certain segments of the audience who want a particular kind of thing. Your viewer is not a citizen first, she's a consumer first. That's point number one. Secondly, you're not following the norms, no? You're rigging. There's corruption in the system. So those, uh, uh, you, you, you are disclosing names of, uh, of all the impalements. At the end of every week, you're... you're one, one, second, one, one, second, one second, please, one second. When you said you are disclosing names, who's disclosing names? More than once, these names have got leaked out. Who is that you who's disclosing names? Even the Mumbai police say that these Hansa research group persons, they got to know, they, they abused their position, they knew which were the households which were impaneled and went and went and bribed them. We are so, we are, it is, it is, is, it, is it utterly shocking, utterly shocking that somebody, some field worker down the line was, was open to a bribe? Wow, is that terrible? What a terrible country. We never knew this happens in India. Some field worker down the line is open to a bribe. Wow. Are you saying this is no problem? Are we naive? I mean, I'm, there is a problem. Why are, so, why are we aghast at the idea that some, some down the line, some you know, low-level field worker was susceptible to a bribe? Oh, God, this is terrible stuff. This happens in India. We didn't know that, did we? <laughs> what, did, what then? How would you define the problem? Of television ratings and the impact that television ratings had. You know, you're the you big know, sitting on it. You know, according to. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know I'll, I'll tell you the real problem. I'll tell you the real problem. The real problem is, the real problem is the same as, it, uh, as, as with all self-regulation in this country. At a seminar a few years ago, uh, David Levy of the Reuters Institute made a very telling comment which didn't go down very well with the audience. He said, 
the effectiveness of self regulation is a function first of all of culture and his point was that if we in india keep complaining about self regulation doesn't work but it works in other other parts of the world so perhaps we should be looking at ourselves as to why we can't make it work no self regulation works in this country we are fundamentally incapable of self regulation What's the way forward? Are you trying to say that the way the system works, the way the television rating system works, that at the end of each week you get a certain set of numbers, and the studies that have been shown, including the one by Ernest and Young and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, that the total size of the television industry in India is supposed to be somewhere in the region of about seventy-eight thousand crores, seventy-eight thousand seven hundred crores. That's the last figure that came through. and i suppose a fairly large proportion of this amount is really advertising money that's spent by advertisers so what's the way forward I mean, what are the flaws in the system and i i accept we are not able to self regulate ourselves what is the what is the way forward if if self regulation is cannot be properly implemented then there bound to be uh, for whatever reason statutory regulation including the kind of action that the mumbai police chief has taken i can tell you this is the solution okay but i just wish that when and i say this is somebody who's been there somebody who's tried to do something about it and i do wish at that time when when we went to the police not in bombay when we were in parts of the country when we tried to invoke these things we got no support at all we were shoved we were shooed away There's some minor some rubbish about some tv you know that who cares that's what happened to us time and again time and again i just wish they were away for when these things happen for them to be taken seriously we get away with all sorts of things in this country because we get away with them so that's up to Okay, so are you tacitly supporting the Arnab Goswami viewpoint, which says that uh, Mumbai police uh, there have been what, I don't know how many tens of thousands of of fake accounts were created to trash the Mumbai police's investigation into the Sushant Singh Rajput case, and this is no? some sort of uh, uh, I mean the Mumbai I, I, police attacking. What I said at the outset, I am not going to talk about any particular single channel, what they did, what they didn't do. Okay, I don't know whether Arnab Goswami is right or wrong. How, how am I supposed to know? I'm not. I'm not investigating the matter. I only see and read what I see and read in the media. You're reading the same newspapers. You're watching the same televisions, and you and I and those who are watching us talk up. My last question to you: Is there a systemic problem if so can you spell it out what is the systemic polit uh, problem how is it having an impact on what is produced for audiences and what needs to be done again if you really want to diagnose the ailment the real real deep down as you will know harari said if you're not paying for the content you are the product For whatever historical reasons, let's not get into how and why it happened. But we we are not accustomed to paying for content because we don't pay for content. The media depend entirely on advertising. They, their only revenue really is advertising. The sub, even the subscription revenue doesn't in broadcasting. They don't get even subscription revenue because the way the the system is set up, the way the system is the, it's a crooked system. The distribution system is entirely crooked. Broadcasters do not get subscription revenue. At best, at best, it may subsidize. the cost of placement that what what you call the carriage fee yes okay now here's this because here is somebody who owns a pipe and who charges you for putting stuff into the pipe and charges the other guy for taking stuff out of the pipe his pipe is of no use without the content so he should be paying for the content as they do elsewhere in the world but here they charge for the content and then they charge the customer for accessing the content Broadcasters make no money except advertising. If you were, in fact, uh, I remember a, a New Yorker article in which uh, by Ken Oletta, in which Vinay Jain was, Vinay Jain said to Ken Oletta, "We are in the advertising business. If ninety percent of your revenue comes from advertising, guess what business you are in? 
can't fault him. I give him at least I give him credit for being up up front with it instead of pretending uh, to be serving some very large national purpose and asking for all kinds of concessions because we are so wonderfully we are so important. Now, as long as people don't pay for content, okay, you made that. Yeah. Advertising, as long as they're putting advertising, they have to get the eyeballs. All right, and they'll do what it takes. They'll do what it takes. I thought that would be the last question I would ask you, but I would nevertheless want to ask you one other question. This has been happening over the years, and especially after the pandemic, these processes have got accelerated. Monetizing content on the internet, you know, we can talk about that. We can have a separate discussion on that some other time. But the short point is. the whole revenue model of the traditional media includes television has gone completely broke so where do you see the whole rating system going from here and when i say ratings i don't just mean television ratings i mean ratings in terms of what people watch what people read what people hear and ways of measurement and and we already know the giant digital monopolies the way they work so let these be your concluding remarks if i had a straight forward even if not short even if a long but straight forward answer to the question about where do we go how do how do we fix this i'd be making a lot of money off it okay. uh i'm afraid it will take it will take a uh, broadcasters starting with broadcasters broadcasters advertisers and perhaps some form of uh, institutional support like a regulator to sit down at a table with the seriousness of purpose and without the intention of pointing fingers and finding fault only with the serious is the purpose of addressing an issue it will take it it will take that to come out anywhere from this okay so thank you so much in ramani rao for speaking to me and uh, on behalf of the viewers of news lake let me thank you once again in trying to understand the whole so called trp scandal which seems to have attracted the attention of large numbers of people after what the mumbai police did did on the thursday the 8th of october keep watching news